Yay! Holiday time! Happy holidays, everybody! But medicine is so terrible that even Christmas has a disease named for it. Why did they call the disease Christmas disease? Because the first patient having this condition was named Stephen Christmas. So that's why it has nothing to do with Christmas whatsoever. Before I tell you what is Christmas disease, let's tell you what happens when you bleed. You clot. Oh, really? Yes. But this clotting or coagulation happens in two steps. First, called primary hemostasis due to platelets. Platelets are the heroes here. Secondary hemostasis thanks to coagulation factors. Hemo means blood. Stasis means stable or stop. So it's a process to stop bleeding and preserve the heme, the blood. Primary platelets. Primary platelets. Secondary coagulation factor. So here are the coagulation factor. I'll explain the coagulation pathway in another video, but for now in brief. Coagulation is fibrin. It's a protein meshwork where the RBCs will get stuck forming like a complex. This is the fibrin plus RBCs and this is your blood clot. Nice, this fibrin cannot be there in an active form. Why? Because you will clot every single moment. It's found in a fibrinogen, inactive form. And to activate fibrinogen into fibrin, we need thrombin. But also thrombin cannot be left that way because you will clot. So we need a prothrombin activator complex to activate the inactive prothrombin into the active thrombin. And thrombin will convert the inactive fibrinogen into the active fibrin. The prothrombin activator complex consists of four things, two words and two numbers. The two numbers are factor 10 and factor 5. The two words are the calcium and phospholipid. That's nice. So, to coagulate, you can use extrinsic pathway or intrinsic pathway. Also, you can use both of them. So, let's say that there's a trauma. Let's say there is a knife stuck here into your skin surface. So, now the blood vessel will open into the tissue. Oh, tissue thromboplastin will flow from the tissue to the blood. Tissue thromboplastin will activate factor 7 into the active form of factor 7. There is the extrinsic pathway, it's the fastest one. The fastest one, it occurs rapidly, but it is less efficient. We need a more efficient clot, please. Let's go to the intrinsic pathway. Intrinsic to whom? To the blood vessel. I need something from within the vessel, i.e. collagen, to activate this cascade. So. Like sports, the most important player will have the number 10. Okay, now you have your most important factor, 10. So, we have two factors after 10, 12, 11, and two factors before 10, 9, and 8. So, 8, 9, 11, 12. And 10 is the hero. When you activate factor 10, you are done, prothrombin activator complex, and then the thrombin. So, we have four factors leading to factor 10. Any deficiency in factor 8 is called hemophilia A. Deficiency in factor 9 called hemophilia B. We cannot have deficiency of factor 10 because it's the most important factor. We will die without factor 10. So factor 11 is called hemophilia C. So hemophilia A is factor 8. Hemophilia B, factor 9. Hemophilia C, factor 11. So how to measure them? 
we need PT for prothrombin time for the extrinsic pathway and PTT for the intrinsic pathway. How to remember this pathway is so short, so PT is shorter than PTT with the intrinsic pathway. So hemophilia B is Christmas disease. Now, it's a genetic disease deficiency of factor 9. It's an X-linked recessive, so it will be more common in males. There is bleeding, but it's deeper than the superficial platelet primary hemostasis related type of bleeding. So this bleeding is deep, like internal bleeding, bleeding into the joints, also known as heme arthrosis, or bleeding into your brain. Oh, wow. So how to test for hemophilia B? Bleeding time will be normal because bleeding time measures platelets and platelets function are normal here. PT, normal because there is the extrinsic pathway and it's normal. Factor 9 is in the intrinsic pathway, so PTT will be prolonged. Factor 9 activity will be decreased. How to treat it? Give factor 9 concentrate. Like, thankfully, today we can give the patient like a single factor give it to the patient, that's nice, patient is now happy. Give hepatitis B vaccine because this patient will have a lot of blood transfusions and giving a lot of injections, increase the risk of hep B. If there are some antibodies to the factor 9, i.e. it's not deficiency, it's antibodies against the factor, we can bypass the step and give the factor 9 activated in the active form. That's it for Christmas disease. I hope next year will be better than this year for all of you, but you'll still be studying medicine. Uh, medical students are so miserable. I'll see you in the next video.